right, looks like we're ready to get started. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness post-game press conference featuring Villanova. We are going to start first by hearing from Jermaine Samuels, followed by Coach Jay Wright. I would like to thank everyone for participating today. I want to remind you that you can see them, but they can't see you. So it would be great if you could make sure you please state your name and affiliation before you ask your question and use the raise hand function to indicate if you would like to ask a question. With that, I would like to first start with Mike Jensen. Mike Jensen, I'd ask you to unmute your, and you can ask your question now. And, uh, did, did you expect Chris Arch to, uh, to come out firing like that? Yeah, anytime. Uh, Chris Chris is always ready to fire. Um, he just hasn't really got an opportunity to uh, the past couple of games because he's uh, you know making plays for others. But Chris has always been ready, and uh, he's been working on it since he stepped into this program. So, yeah, I'm glad to see him make shots. Was there some actual conversation? Uh, go ahead and take it. Uh, no, he that's just make a play. You know, he tr uh, we trust him to make that play. He trusts himself 100% uh, to make that play. And uh, yeah, so he he just made made shots. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, I have John Tietel from Hoops HD. I apologize if I didn't get the pronunciation right. John, please unmute your t computer. No problem, John Tietel from HoopsHD.com. I uh, just want to ask about uh, just the, the overall game. I believe you guys made 15 of 33s and had six turnovers. I know it's not perfect, but is that about as perfect a game as you guys have played all season? Uh, it, it might be, um, um, that's not our, necessarily our goal. Our goal is to play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes. If shots go in, they go in. If they don't, then, you know, we rely on playing defense. So, um, we, tonight we made shots and, you know, we just move on and, you know, get ready for the next matchup. All right. Next up, I would like to introduce David Malandra. David, please unmute your phone or computer and ask your question. Hey, Jermaine, can you talk about the overall performance from you guys tonight, just how things were clicking? Um, everybody was uh, out to, you know, play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes. We've been talking about it all season, trying to be the best team by the end of the season and, you know, proving to each other that we're all in this together. We're here to make plays for each other. And, you know, again, we're playing 40 minutes of Villanova basketball. And I think everybody was going out there to execute that and prove that to each other at, uh, uh, all the way until the end of the game. How does it feel to make the Sweet 16? Uh, it's actually surreal. Uh, I haven't, haven't really, uh, thought about it, honestly, but you know, it, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. How do you think you guys have handled everything so far in the bubble of Indy? I think we handled it great. You know, we've been laser focused, um, and staying together, um, and getting better at the same time. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting older these guys at all. Thank you. Next up. I have Mickey Shuey. Mickey is with the Indianapolis Business Journal. Mickey, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jermaine, it's Mickey Shuey, Indianapolis Business Journal. Actually, I have a bit of a follow-up to that. Uh, how how are you and your teammates uh, passing time in the bubble, and uh, and and how are you kind of staying staying in check uh, in the uh, in the controlled environment? Um, we. Uh... You know, we have dinners that we, we see each other in our rooms. You know, there's plenty of basketball to watch. Uh, so, but every time we have, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner together, film sessions. So we're, we're together um, a lot and, you know, we're getting better every chance we can. And um, that's pretty much how, how we pass the time. And, you know, as far as protocols go, you know, doing everything we're supposed to do, uh, staying out of harm's way, sticking together, and again, remaining focused. Do you feel like the, uh, the protocols are are a help or a hindrance to uh, to kind of staying locked in heading into the Sweet 16? Um, they're definitely a help. Um, we've been doing it all year, basically. We've been in, in a tournament. We've been in two tournaments where, you know, it's been locked down and, you know, you have to be careful what you do and uh, stay close to each other. Um, so we're pretty much used to it by now. And, you know, now it's all about just, you know, keep getting better as the time goes on. Okay. Thanks so much. Next up, I have Joseph Giuliano from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Joseph, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jermaine. Um, 
this is the best shooting game you guys have had in about six weeks. Um, what was it like out there tonight to, uh, you know, pass to a teammate and know that there was a good chance they were going to make the shot? Uh, it felt great. Um, I'm, I was more excited about, you know, just playing Villanova basketball, you know, just proving it to each other on the defensive end, making extra plays for each other, making extra passes. Um, shots are always nice, but, you know, it was just that togetherness on the floor is, is more than just making shots. And how are you and uh, Jeremiah meshing? Uh, you know, you guys are doing it all, you know, whether it's inside or, uh, or passing from the perimeter. Uh, what's that been like uh, lately? Um, it's been great. Uh, me and Jer Jeremiah had that chemistry since uh, last year. Uh, we try to build on it every day, um, be prepared for anything, and, you know, um, try to make plays for each other. And uh, he's, a, he's a great uh, person to have on our team, especially for me. Uh, he definitely makes life easier, and I make life easier for him. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up, we have John Fanta. John, if you could please introduce yourself and let us know who you're affiliated with, that would be great after you unmute. Uh, hey, Jermaine, John Fanta, Big East Digital Network. Um, when you guys fell behind in this game, North Texas gets off that hot shooting start. Uh, you were down 17 to 11. Then you go on a 22 to two run. What changed on the defensive end? Um, we, we refocus, you know, we know that they're a very, very, uh, offensive, you know, gifted team. They can make shots and, you know, make up points quickly. And we knew that it was going to be a grind. We got back to the timeout, you know, stick to Villanova basketball, stick to our core values and go back out there and execute. And, uh, the rest will take care of itself. And then when you think about this team's journey, uh, I'm sure that these last couple of weeks, the wave of emotion, right? Because of just how much of a heart and soul guy Colin is to your program. And I know you're playing for him, you know, every game, but can you speak to kind of the last 10 days when you think about where this team was 10 days ago on that Thursday at the big East tournament, where you just come short to Georgetown to now the fact that this team is about to go to the sweet 16. What does it say about this group? Uh, it just proves our, our commitment to Villanova basketball. You know, there's a lot of things that are going to happen throughout the season. It's a journey of a season, but our goal every year, every time we step on the floor, is to be the best Villanova basketball team by the end of the season. So, yeah, we may have uh, gone through a little, you know, rough patches. By the end of the day, we were going to get better um, as the season got along. And, you know, that's still our mission is, is to try to be the best Villanova basketball team by the end of the season. How big is it to, to see, uh, I'm sure everybody, but particularly – Caleb and Cole, you know, they, they combined for 20 in this game. Just uh, what's, what's the emotion that, that you have seeing those guys find their groove here and how important is it for this group to have that complimentary scoring from those guys? Um, I'm extremely happy for them. They work, they work their tails off all the time uh, when no one's looking, even in practice, everything. So they, they deserve it. Um, and, you know, those guys are, are a big help. And, you know, going down the stretch, and especially during March Madness, I know Caleb hasn't even gotten a chance to play March Madness. Cole was there with us our sophomore year. I mean, my sophomore year, but he didn't really uh, play too much. So, you know, just them having that experience and also contributing is, is, is everything to us. Thanks, man. Thank you. As a reminder, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function and we'll get that out there for Jermaine. Jermaine, next up, we have Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Ralph, please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jermaine, congratulations. Um, do, do you guys, can you, can you sense that things are getting more normal? I, I, I don't know if that's the right word, without Colin. In other words, over these last four games, is there a sense that, okay, like this sort of feels like we can, we can continue doing this? What, did you need some adjustment time? Uh, yeah, definitely there was a, a big adjustment, but we always have this mentality that it's next man up. Every All the guys that have, are playing right now off the bench have been working since, since I don't even know how long, since they stepped into the program. Brian, Archie, Eric Dixon, um, those guys have been working so hard, and they've always been ready. So even though Colin does go down, we were ready to, to, to have them got, those guys you know, make an impact. All right. We have two more questions for you, Jermaine. First one up is Mark Canazaro from the New York Post. Again, Mark, apologize if I didn't get that last name right. Mark, please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jermaine. Um, I just have a question regarding the job that Jay has done 
with Colin going down. Uh, how has he handled this, uh, in your opinion, and just kind of how he's adjusted on the fly so late in the season? Uh, what kind of job do you think he's done, in your opinion? I think he's done a tremendous job um, of adapting. You know, that's definitely not an easy situation, especially Colin going down, you know, one of our main guys. But they went back to the drawing board, uh, not even just coach, just the entire coaching staff, all the assistants. They went to the drawing board and, you know, try to make things as simple as possible for us and making sure that the most important thing we do is go out there and play Villanova basketball. And that was going to be the, the bottom line regardless. Is there, I mean, in the time that you've been around Jay, what are the things that stand out to you that just, you know, allows him to to make these adjustments to keep you guys confident uh and, and move forward when things like this happen um one thing is the thing we always preach attitude you know there's no feeling sorry for ourselves there's no being down on ourselves uh blaming each other for anything it's just the next challenge next man up um and keeping that laser focus on trying to be the best team we can be and you know whatever happens happens uh, um and that's just the mentality that he's he spread on to all of us as players through his eye mentality. Thanks, Jermaine. All right, Jermaine, our last question this evening comes from Michael Keeley. Michael, if you could please identify for Jermaine who you're with and unmute and ask your question, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, Jermaine. I'm from VU Hoops. Um, so obviously, North Texas came off an upset against Purdue in the first round. Um, how did you guys approach what, you know, could have been a trap game for you guys? And how do you, you know, go from being a 12 seed and being a 13 seed in the second round? Um, uh, we just we just knew that how you know explosive they were going to be as a team. Um, regardless, you know, all all of their guards and even uh, their big, you know, are all play together, make uh, plays for each other, play extremely hard. Um, and we knew, it, I mean, they they beat Purdue, so they were going to come in, you know, hungry. And uh, ready to go, and um, uh, you know the the team is not a, a slouch at all. So you know they're there for a reason. They're a great team, and um, we were ready to accept the challenge. All right, thank you, Jermaine, for your time. Best of luck in the next round. We're going to be joined momentarily by Coach Jay Wright. In the meantime, if you know you're going to have a question for Coach, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand now. We'll be started momentarily. Thank you. Hi, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Coach Jay Wright with Thanks. Villanova is here this evening. We are happy to have you. We'd like to start with an opening statement from you, please. Well, I'd like to start by congratulating uh, North Texas on a, on a great season, and, um, and, and they're an outstanding team. I mean, we, we played well, and, and we made shots. When, when you make shots like that, it's hard hard to beat anybody, but um, we, we, we really respect uh, Coach Mack and his squad. Um, and uh, Javion Hamlet's a hell of a player. Uh, very proud of our guys. Um, you know, we've got two captains left, um, Demir Cosby Roundtree, our senior captain, and uh, Colin Gillespie, our other senior captain, are home in Philly. Shout out to them. We miss them. Um, and our other two captains are Jermaine Samuels and Jeremiah Robinson Earl, and those two – um, since we've got here, just done an outstanding job of just demanding of our guys, focus on detail, attention to detail. Um, and, and, and they just started the game leading our guys defensively and rebounding and making the right plays. I, I think those two are really important to both the games we've played here. And uh, we look forward to getting some practices together and, and trying to get better. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll start with our first question from the Philadelphia Inquirer, Joseph Giuliano. Joseph, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Jay, it's, uh, still, it's still Joe. But, <laughs> um, I wondered uh, when you guys were down early by uh, eight, I think it was, um, what finally clicked in for you to, uh, you know, kind of put the game, uh, put the momentum back on your side? Uh, you, you know, we, we had a plan going in defensively, and, and we knew um, 
that Hamlet was such a dynamic score, we knew we just we just were, might have to adjust. We didn't think we were going to have to adjust that early, but Cole Swider came into the game and 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 defensively started. Um, he changed. We, we changed our ball screen coverage. Put Cole in there, and Cole did a great job, um, doubling him and and getting back to his man. And then we got a couple stops and hit some threes in transition, and and, and I, I thought that made a big difference. And this was the first time you guys had shot uh, over fifty percent since the Marquette game in February. What was it like to have the rims a little bigger tonight? Yeah, it, everything looks great when the shots are going in, man. And and I, I think. Um, I think our guys have learned to play through some games when our shots weren't going in, and I think that's important for us, you know. And 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 so, when this happened, I, I think we played well enough defensively that if we weren't shooting like that, we we would have still had a shot at this game because I thought we were pretty good defensively. Um, but it sure is nice when they're going in. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Joe. Next up, we have Mike Jensen. Mike, if you could please unmute and identify your affiliation for coach, that'd be great. Thank you. Hey, Mike Jensen, Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, a, a couple of arch questions: Were there uh, were there specific conversations pregame of if you've if you've got it, you got to take it? And and then my second question is: Just just go back to Providence, pre-Providence, and was there debate? Was there spirited discussion among the staff? Are we going with Arch? What are we doing uh, uh, after Collins' injury? We we definitely thought they have a really um, they've got a really unique uh, defensive package where they they don't play one guy and they help with him a lot. We thought it might be Arch, and and it was and and um, and so he was ready, and um, and he's a good shooter. I mean, it didn't surprise us. He's he's a good shooter, but they wouldn't know that because you don't really get to see him play that much, you know, and um, and. When Colin first went down, we we knew we would use Arch. Arch is one of those guys in practice that, you know, we always say to him, just be ready, Arch, because we'll throw you in a game at any time because you just know he knows what we're doing. He's tough. He's smart. And I always would say to him during the season, Arch, just be ready. You know, we don't play him on the first team in practice because he's always so good at, at running the other team's plays and it gives him great experience. Um, and, and he was ready. He was ready for this, and, and our whole staff knew it. Thanks. Yep. All right. Next up from the Associated Press, we have Ralph Rizzo. Ralph? Actually, uh, John Titel from HoopsHD.com, but I'm happy to go for it. Uh, Coach, um, Coach Scott Drew has now made three Sweet 16s and a pair of Elite 8s, but he's never made a Final Four. Um, if you're one of those people that believes that you have to beat the best to be the best, I was wondering, do you remember a specific win that changed the public view of your own program? from just a great team to a serious championship contender, maybe beating Duke in 09 or Kansas in 2016 or something like that? Yeah, there, I mean, you know, there's a, I, I would think the, the Baylor program is, is very, very well respected no matter what they do from here. Uh, and I think Scott knows that. We all know that in the basketball world. But I, I, I definitely get your your question, John, because – there is a different. There's a public perception that is different, and um, uh, I hope we're not the game that changes their public <laughs> perception. But I, I get it. They they beat us a couple years ago in, in a in a tournament game um, at in Myrtle Beach. Was that last year or two years ago? Yeah, and um, and I, and I thought they they were, we were pretty good, and, and they were they were better that day. So um, I, I can't I can't really answer like what the you know, the media perception is, but I think in the basketball world, they're very well respected. Thanks for hopping in there, John. Now, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Ralph? Hey, Jay, can you hear me? I do, Ralph. Okay. Um, so, you know, when you make this Sweet 16, this means you win the national championship, right? That's the way it works <laughs> with Villanova? I hope so, man. I don't, I don't remember all those uh, – you know all those those types of uh, stats, but I, I like when you guys bring them up. Uh, on a more serious question, I know it's probably hard to sum this up, but can, did it take the team a few games to learn how to play without Colin? Because it seems like every game it's gotten a little better. Is that your perception? 
definitely. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we did not play poorly against Georgetown. They, they were playing great basketball. We played – we played a great game, you know. They hit two oh, foul oh, shots yeah. at the end to win it. So we, we, we felt like we were getting better, and uh, even the Providence game, you know, we, we were down big at half. The second half, we came back and played well. So we felt like second half of Providence, Georgetown, we're getting better. We're getting better as long as we can keep playing, we can keep improving, and and that definitely made it. Made, I think it's making a difference, and we're looking forward to a few days of practice here. I think we can get better. All right, next up, David Melandra. David, if you could please identify your affiliation, that would be helpful. Thank you. Hey, Jay, um, I'm with Philly Sports Network. A couple questions for you. One, can you just talk about your guys' uh, overall performance tonight, how everything was just clicking tonight? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we, I, I, we were pretty good defensively. I, I, I think we, we, we did a good job. I think our guys are getting comfortable. Our young guys are getting – experience and and I think them coming off the bench like we had a session with when Brian Antoine came in Cole Swider came in uh, we brought Ryan Chris Arch back in and we we made a good run so uh, I think that depth is helping and and I, I thought it was a really good offensive effort we made shots that that always helps and you always talk about learning from previous experiences what can you tell your younger players that have never experienced making it to the sweet 16. I think that um, this is such a different year. In one way, I feel bad for the guys because, you know, when you go to the Sweet 16, you get to go home and everybody's all excited and there's a lot of hype and you get to rest a couple days. You know, they're missing all of that. But on the other hand, these NCAA games are really valuable for our young guys, really valuable. And uh, there's not the same – It's there's not the same kind of pressure in a normal NCAA game without the crowds and – people around you there's not as many distractions so i think it's pretty fortunate for our young guys and final one for me what are your initial thoughts about going up against baylor they're awesome you know we we, we played them last year and they've got all the same guys back and they beat us last year you know and, and we lost the first round draft pick so we know how good they are um but you know we, we got a few days of practice here and try to prepare and um i i i just I think they've been one of the best teams in the country, them and Gonzaga, all year. So we're, get, we're going to get to play the best, and uh, that's why you, you play in the NSA tournament. You, you look forward to these type of games. Next up, John Fanta. John, if you could please unmute and identify your affiliation. Thank you. John Fanta, Big East Digital Network. Jay, congratulations. Uh, Thanks, just Johnny. Talk, just talking with Jermaine. You know, he, he talked about the fact that he's not surprised by, by that next man up mentality playing out right now with this program. But obviously, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing for that culture to end up in the results. Just what can you say about what you've seen in the next man up mentality turning into those results for this program? And how much is it a testament to, to just the kind of guys you bring in? It all comes down to the players, John. You know, you, you can, like you said, you can talk about that, but then when you get your opportunity, what do you what do you do with it? And I, I just, I'm very impressed. I can't say we're surprised, and I think that's what Jermaine's telling you. Like, these guys work really hard in practice. You might not see a Chris Archie Jacket who'll play a lot. You might not see Brian Antoine or, or um, Eric Dixon um, or even a guy like Trey Patterson who got in tonight. You don't get to see them. But we do every day, and you see the improvement, you see the attention to detail, and then they, and then they get their chance, and they get their chance, and, and and they come through, and that's what makes a player. You, you know, you got to get it done, and it's a tribute to these guys. They're they're talented guys that they they got their opportunity in a really difficult situation, and and they produced. To that point, can you speak to where this team was? about 10 days ago when, like you said, you, you played well against Georgetown. It was a tight game. They, they don't miss a free throw in that game and you just fall short to where you are 10 days later now in this role of advancing to the second weekend, which surely is not something that's just easy to do. Yeah. You know, publicly I, I can see the perception is, you know, you were, you know, you got knocked out, you lost your last two games, you got knocked out in the first round, and, and that's true. You know, you are what your record is. But but on the inside, we we knew we played a great second half against Providence. We knew we played a good, really good game against um, uh, Georgetown, you know, without Justin Moore having any practice and really being at about 50%. Uh, 
So we knew we were getting better, and, and then we had great practices in New York. You know, our time spent in New York after getting beat by Georgetown, staying in the bubble there, practicing at Basketball City, we, we got a lot of good work in. We had three really hard days of practice, and it's nice when it pays off for the guys. Sometimes you do all that, you know, and you play a Winthrop team, and they hit threes and you lose. But on the inside, you still got to know you're getting better. So I'm, I'm really proud of these guys, really happy for them. Thanks. All right, next up, we have Andre Monroe with Insider Institute. Andre, if you could please unmute. Yeah, Coach, congratulations on, on the win. You Thanks, guys Andre. faced adversity when you lost Colin. Uh, what does it say about the team to battle through that adversity and now make it to the Sweet 16? Most important, Andre, we have really good players. That, that's always – it always comes down to that. It, it really does. Um, we've, we've got really good young players that, that stepped up when they got their opportunity, and we've got – I hate to say older because Jeremiah's only a sophomore but, and Justin's only a sophomore, but Jermaine's a senior and um, – Caleb, da um, uh, Caleb Daniels, Brandon Slater, and Swider are juniors. You know, those guys are really good players, and um, they just they just took it up a notch, and they took more responsibility, and they got their opportunity, and they proved themselves. It's, it's, it's a really beautiful thing in, in sports and as a coach when you get to see your guys do that. All right, next up we have Hendricks Magley with the Indianapolis Star. Hendricks, please unmute. Hi, Jay. Hendricks Magley with the Indianapolis Star. Um, Hi, you know, I think after the eight-point North Texas lead, I think you guys outscored them 34 to 6 the rest of the first half. You know, in, in a tournament that seems like it's been reigned supreme by lower seeds and upsets, you know, how important was it to kind of go into that halftime break with that big lead against a team that's really kind of played with an underdog mentality, especially after just upsetting Purdue on Friday? Yeah, it, it – there's – there's an advantage to being an underdog in some sense in the NCAA tournament, um, or especially early in the tournament. Uh, actually, any time in the tournament, you know, there, there's a little advantage. Um, but there's a reason you're not the underdog, you know. So um, I, I really thought getting Brian Antoine, Cole Swider, and Chris Archidiakon coming back in, those three gave us great energy defensively and changed the game. And because we got stops, we got out in transition and got some easy baskets, got some easy threes. In the beginning of the game, we, could, we couldn't stop them. And um, Hamlet was just isolating us and scoring. So we were going up against a, a very good North Texas set defense. But I thought those three coming into the game made a, a big difference and, and got us on a run. All right, Coach, just two more questions here. Next up, we have Mark Conazaro for the New York Post. Mark, again, apologize if I didn't get that name right. You're up. Hey, Jay, congratulations. Hey, Thanks, Mark. Um, can you speak to, uh, this is not the first time you've lost a player injury in your long career, but I, what, what goes into trying to reboot and readjust when a guy, a, a key guy like Colin goes down and how much of that is, is, is technical in terms of putting your players in different spots and how much of it is mental in, in kind of letting them, you know, letting them know, you know, they can carry on and still, and still keep the same success going. You're right, Mark. It happens to everybody. Everybody loses players, you know, every team, and it's happened to us a lot. And uh, But but a guy like Colin, <laughs> he's, he's everything on the court for us, and, and then off the court he is too. So, you know, there's a lot to it, talking to Jermaine and Jeremiah about, you know, you're the only two captains left. Our other senior captain, Demir Cosby Roundtree, is out for the season too. So you're the only captains left. Like, a lot more responsibility on you guys. Talk to the juniors. You guys got to step it up. You know what – Colin does off the court. You guys got to do that. And then there's a technical aspect when the guy you run your offense through is 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 out, and you got to change, you know, the focus of your offense. But most important is players. Players have to step up, and we talk all year to our guys about the fact that all right, you, you might not be playing right now, but you know you're getting better every day. You know you're ready. So you never know when you're gonna get your chance. It might be next year, but you know you're ready. And good teams have guys that that are not playing, but they're they're good enough to be playing. They just have better guys in front of them. And I, I think that's what came down to with our guys. You know, guys that are playing now like Chris Arch and Brian Antoine and Eric Dixon, they've, they're just, they've been ready and, and they're talented guys. And I think that's making a difference. Just as a follow, I mean, you referenced, obviously, you've got good players on the team. The coverage's not bare, but um, I just, how would you characterize this in terms of degree of difficulty for you coaching with, with this year 
compared to maybe some other issues you've had over the years with the number of guys you've had go down? Yeah, this year, Mark, you can't even compare this year to any Mm -hmm. other. It's so crazy. I think at the end of the season, you're going to hear a lot of coaches tell some crazy stories of what went on this year. And let's keep it in perspective. There's far more serious things going on. You know, people losing their jobs, their lives. It's way more serious. But in our little tiny basketball world, it's it's craziness. So all of our quarantines and then these injuries, it's been a crazy year. It's definitely the craziest year in our coaching career. But I think most of the coaches will say that to you. Thanks, Jay. We'll talk to you next week. All right, Mark. All right, last question this evening, Coach, is from Austin Petalillo from Trenton to Philly. Austin, if you could please unmute. Hey, Jay, can you hear me? I hear you, Austin. All right, cool. Um, so obviously, like you mentioned earlier, no going home in between first round, second round, and Sweet 16 Elite Eight. What's the schedule going to be looking like this week? <laughs> you know what, Austin? I- I'm not sure. I I, I- – I was talking to our assistants. One of the things that we definitely want to do is get these guys outside for a couple of days. We literally, the, the NCAA has done a great job here of setting everything up so you can schedule time outside at Victory Field. But the days we were scheduled, it rained. And then on the nice days, we, we were busy with practice and game prep. We didn't get to do it. So we haven't been outside since Monday. So I definitely want to get these guys outside. Uh, we definitely want to get a couple practices in. We, we need it. And, and, and we want it. Our, our guys are excited. A lot of times this time of year, you just, you know, you, you don't want to practice anymore. It's a long year. But we miss so much practice this year. Like, our guys literally enjoy practice. So, I know we're going to do that. And um, I, don't, I don't know when we're playing. So, I don't know anything else about it. All right. Thanks a lot, Jay. Take care. You got it. Take care, Austin. All right. Thanks for your time this evening, Coach. Thank you. That's it for the postgame news conference transcript of coaches interview will be provided by ASAP sports at NCA.com backslash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCA digital media hub at NCA.baritone.com. Thank you all for joining us.